And the benefit of this setup is that if I don't control the eccentric, my nuts are gonna get crushed. And we're back. Dynamic effort bench day today. And now that we are five weeks out, inside of five weeks out from the meet, I got a problem that I was hoping would solve itself on its own as the upper body continued to get into better shape. But now that we are this close to the meet, I think we're gonna have to switch things up a little bit in order to solve it. And on my Friday sessions on the heavy bench, I haven't been complaining about this during the session because I don't wanna like speak excuses into existence. But the fact is, is that my triceps have been feeling freaking tired on that day. And I know that that is limiting my ability to show and ability to feel solid under the bar. And now that I need to pull some sort of peak out of my ass, what I need to do is start toning down a little bit on this day so that I can show better on Fridays. And like under normal circumstances, when my upper body's in shape, I don't even have to worry about this and I can crank this day hard right into the meat. But right now with how things are feeling, I think it's gonna be the smart call to pull back just a little bit, not quite as far as last week coming back from the travel because I feel way better today than I did last week, but I still think I need to be a little bit friendlier to the triceps. And with how good the American Camber Grip Bar has felt in terms of challenging shoulder ER, I figure I'm gonna run a real reverse grip press today, which should eliminate the need to go heavier and should be more beneficial in terms of challenging that ER and really having to crank in with the upper back so that that can be dialed on Friday when it's time to actually bench. <sighs> And I haven't run a real reverse grip in a very long time. So only real goal, don't drop the bar on my face. Yeah, that is nice. Still nice. And plan is five by five, short rest, put some stiff on it. Yeah, that works. Wyatt's going to be making fun of me for doing reverse grips with less than him. But you know what, Wyatt? Not everybody can be that good at reverse grips. And we'll run one comp grip set just for good measure. <laughs> so the whole time I was running those reverse grips, I was like, holy shit, this feels good. And then did that last comp grip set because I had the suspicion and I was right because that felt freaking amazing so yeah good call today also i just noticed how slid off that plate is so good thing i waited five sets and on the theme of toning things down today not gonna do any big secondary pressing movements so go straight into some chaos push-ups and i figure with what we learned there I may try this with a reverse grip and see if we can manage to not die, but oh, that's, yeah, that's, no, we're, that, that would kill me, so regular grip it is, and I'll try harder to maintain relatively 
even loading between each hand today because that was a problem the last time that I ran these, but we're back up to the blue band instead of the gray, so it's a little bit less out of control, which makes me more confident on getting into that left side. <sighs> And we're pretty high, so we're getting a lot of reps in, which is going to be good from that connective tissue tolerance perspective. Oh. Ah. And going to try to slow this set down a little bit, be more deliberate with what is being loaded, what is contracting make it hard via control rather than pushing the reps sky high. And like the first time I did these was during the pandemic, had a shitty old rack in the garage, didn't have much weight yet. So I was like, I need to find a way to make a push up a little bit harder hung the bands and the J-hooks, saw Laura Phelps doing these on Instagram, and I was like, this looks sick. And it turns out, they were in fact freaking sick. And that was one of the best my shoulders had felt at that point in my powerlifting career, just because I was doing so much of these, and the scap control shoulder capsule control got so freaking good as a result. So if your shoulders suck, this can be a very, very productive accessory for you to run. Whew. And no secondary barbell press today, no big triceps movement. Still gonna run a push down with a get jacked in tank. Cause I don't think I need to scale all the way back to zero. I don't think this is gonna be too detrimental for the effect that I want to have on Friday. And I had someone commenting the other week asking if I'm taking accessories to like a seven or an eight RPE. And I'm definitely taking pretty much everything unless I specify right up next to failure, even if it might not look like what most people think of as failure. I'm gonna steal this as a paraphrase of something Dr. Mike talked about in one of his earlier table talks, but if I'm running an accessory with a get jacked intent, my early reps aren't gonna be super fast because I'm trying to be precise in loading into the triceps as well as I freaking can. And because the early reps aren't super fast, you're not gonna see a lot of velocity fall off as I get to the end of the set, even though right about now, my triceps are freaking internally screaming at me because in order to maintain this velocity, they're having to work harder and harder as the set progresses. And even if these don't look that much different than the early reps, they are so much freaking gnarlier. And right about now, like I don't have that much left in the tank, even though there isn't much of a slowdown. And here, oh, there is no way I can get that extra rep. So even if there wasn't a fall off, that is failure being precise while doing it. And that took a couple takes to get the talk right. So triceps are worked well enough. So we are moving on to some pull downs. And because tomorrow should be a big deadlift, going to go relatively light. And again, similar to the chaos push-ups, going to try to make these hard due to absolute control, not weight on the stack just so that 
I'm getting some good upper back connection. I'm getting some good squeeze. I'm getting some good neurological stimulus because there isn't a ton of weight. I might be missing out on mechanical tension, but right now, this is meat prep on the upper back. I don't necessarily need more hypertrophy. I need to just make sure I'm good at connecting to it so that I can use it well on bench press. <sighs> I might actually need to put more weight on for the next set, but never mind. That's kind of getting the feel I need. And for reference, I'd call that one like eight and a half, nine, based on the same principles I was talking about with the pushdowns. And we're up a little bit, but still same intent for this set. I think like the best thing a lot of power lifters could do for their upper back work is just slowing down the pull because if you are just like jerking off into it starting a lawnmower you're going to connect so much more tissue to it even if the weight is lighter by going slower and it's just going to be so much more freaking productive for you. <sighs> and I shoved the incline bench over by the furnace when I was filming the other day. So too lazy to get that out right now. But in order to make the levers a little gnarlier on this front raise, I'm just gonna scoot my ass ahead, get myself leaned back a little bit on the bar. And we're gonna do some front raises. And that is freaking disgusting compared to being upright. Wow. <laughs> wow. One more. And like, this is heavier than I expected it to be, but if you were gonna do a heavy ass delt work or front raise or any sort of shoulder lateral swing raisey thingy, we don't want to be swinging. We wanna be controlled at the bottom, controlled on the way down. And the benefit of this setup is that if I don't control the eccentric, my nuts are gonna get crushed. So extra motivation to catch a high quality eccentric on these. <sighs> and gonna run more of these blast strap face pulls because I really like the feel last week and we need to tilt the camera up. There we go. Anyways, really, like the feel of these last week and like the length of the strap really allows me to pull nice and wide as I'm getting a little bit of that extra rotation, which makes me get a shit ton of rear delt, which is quite important for what I have been feeling on bench right now. And because we already hit last of the pull downs, not gonna do the row alternate. Just gonna crank in, 
blow up them rear delts. So that we get jacked. And round two. And in addition to pulling wide, I'm trying to get a little bit of T-spine round at the bottom, pull into some T-spine arch at the top, and try to roll the shoulder blades down my back, similar to what I'm doing on those Y raises here. And it just gets a really nice feel, not just the rear delts, but through the entire upper back. <sighs> yeah. And already over here on Miana's side of the gym, so might as well run some more of these kettlebell preacher curls. Nice stretchy stretch at the bottom. Nice squeezy squeeze at the top. Slow and controlled. Feel the contraction. And like, people want to make fun of the whole mind-muscle connection dealio, but if you can figure it out on accessories, you will be so much better off because you're going to be able to get more out of less and get a better stimulus with less overall fatigue. And obviously, as a powerlifter, there is a time and a place for accessories where the intent is to move weight. But on a bicep curl, the intent is primarily to grow biceps. And if you can be strict and establish a consistent technique and a consistent strictness, then you can work towards getting stronger and moving more weight with that consistent technique. And I think that the best example that I have of this and kind of like what I'm trying to model my get jacked work after is Jordan Peters because yes, he is disgustingly strong and yes, he does move a disgusting amount of weight, but there's also a disgusting amount of precision underneath that disgusting amount of weight. And that is why he is so disgustingly large. So stretch first, then get strong on the movements where the intention is to build tissue. If it's something like a JM, a rolling dumbbell extension, a stiff leg, yeah, sure. The goal there is to move weights to get strong to transfer the lifts, but the goal of a pushdown is to build triceps so then you can move more weight on the JM so you can move more weight on the bench. Pushdown should be strict to build triceps. JM should be how a JM looks to transfer those triceps towards bench. And round two of these suckers. I'm gonna lean back a little bit, make the levers on the bottom a little grosser for me. There we go. Now this bottom end feels super exposed, but in a good way, of course. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm starting to like actually have fun training biceps, which bodes well for the purely get jacked phase for Seth. That is coming up after this meet. That third person <laughs> reference was not intentional. Just brain getting all jumbled up because of the immensity of these pumps. <sighs> yeah. There we go. I might actually have like a dedicated arm day in the next split. So I apologize in advance for those logs. I mean, we'll try to be silly with them and have fun, but. Oh, oh boy. There we 
we go. <sighs> and I had to dig out the zero to 90 bench anyways, because there were some comments on the hip flexor training video asking if a hanging leg raise or a decline setup would be a good alternative if you don't have a GHR setup. And the problem with the decline setup is because there is a back to the pad, it can be difficult to get full hip extension, even if the levers are gonna be very aggressive on the hip flexors in the bottom of the movement. Now the problem with the hanging leg raise is that even though we can get full hip extension on hanging leg raise, where the hips are, the levers aren't gonna be very difficult on the hip flexors in that extended position. So solution, toss a bench in a power rack, hook your feet underneath the cross member. That way you can get that full hip extension similar to a GHR setup. The levers are really gnarly here and you can just have a good old time doing this. And it can almost be easier to get the hip flexors on here because of the bent knee, it's gonna make it harder to cheat rec fem into the movement. And if you don't have a power rack that you can hook your feet under, pretty much every bench and every gym is gonna have a cross member under the front of the pad that you can hook your feet under, then lean back, still get a decent amount of hip extension here and come up. This is gonna be a little bit less aggressive. So the variation I just showed you is too gnarly. I guess my head's out of frame. You can run these in their place and build your way up to the variation in the power rack. You can tell these are easier by how much higher I'm getting in the reps. And that is enough because I got to pull heavy tomorrow. And that is that really good session. Feeling energized, feeling excited, especially with how well those reverse grips went. And like after doing that, I think that on Friday, I'm probably going to alternate reverse grip and comp grip through my first couple of warm-up sets just to really try to dial in that upper back connection based on how that felt there. I think it should pan out pretty freaking well. And I think that with how I set up everything accessory wise today, pulling back on some of the bigger stuff, we should be in a better space tricep feel wise. So I'm just excited to get this peak done and show up at the meet and do as freaking good as I can. And like, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but while I was commentating at the meet on Sunday, Bryce and I were crunching numbers between flights. And I do think that a PR total is at least possible. I will have to have a lot of things go right for me on the day in order to make that happen. But man, knowing where I was seven and a half months ago, the fact that it's even a possibility is very freaking cool and makes everything that I went through to get here very, very worth it. So guys, going to leave you on that. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing and supporting the channel. It means a lot to see things grow here. So peace out. Have a good rest of your night.